after 36 hours of racing over the season and 830 laps, the Blancpain Endurance Series reaches its final round here at Navarra in northern Spain, with all the championships still to be decided, be them for drivers or for teams. And this next three hours promises to be another fabulous race, not only with the championship situation, but also with what the weather may throw at us. We've had a bit of rain this morning, but there are some big black leaden clouds on their way, and the team's fearing they're going to have a very wet race, or an increasingly wet race, as we work our way through the three hours. The grid, 41 cars lined up, ready to go. David Addison and Hayley Cox and Trackside looking forward to seeing who is going to be crowned as just the second ever Blockdown Endurance Series champion. In the Pro Cup, Baz Linders, Maxime Martin and Marcus Paltola have just three points in hand over Christopher Hazard, Christopher Meese and Stefan Ortelli. It's all up for grabs as well within Pro-Am. And this is where Nick Homerson and Louis Machiels take on Eugenio Amos, Alessandro Bonaccini and Giacomo Petrobelli. So it's between the AF Corsa and the Vita 4-1 Team Italy Ferraris. As far as Pierre Hershey and Robert Hissam are concerned in the Gentleman Trophy, effectively all they need to do is finish to win the class in the championship. They're ahead of Michael Bender and Jan Brunstedt, who are joined this weekend not by Jochen Mangs, but by Daniel Roos. We are set for this last round of the series. And is it going to be a win for the Hexus Racing McLaren? You've got that car and the Lamborghini at the front of the field in Pro Cup, potentially, therefore, taking points away from the Audi and BMW combinations looking to win the championship. But Audi has a trump card potentially in this, and that is that the Belgian Audi Club Team WRT, as you look on the grid scrolling through, has got a third car. Philippe Albuquerque starts on the Jarvis and Frank Stippler are the other drivers. And that, of course, is aimed at again helping the number one car take the championship. Looking at the grid run through now, very good effort in qualifying for the McLaren of ART. Duncan Tappy putting it onto the Pro-Am pole position. Rob Bell starting in the Gulf of the Grid McLaren as ever will be one to watch. In the Mark VDS number four BMW, there's no Mike Hazelman's this weekend as you look at the car there making its way through shot. Mike Hazelman's busy on his day job commitments and other words business duties have kept him out of the car. Nick Katzberg steps in instead. Nick drove to the team and was on for 24 hours. And he gets a chance now racing with Mark VDS in the Long Pan series. And he's good up, runs on to the Pro-Am Cup. Michael Mallock in number 36, the BMW that's going to be started by Nicky Mar Malhoff, the Otto, switching away from the regular seat that he has on Peter 4 1, which is here with the regular car, and Miss Lauda going first. So the field turning its way up towards the end of the lap. You can see in the background one of the two hit in lanes. That was down at turn 13, second gear has been 65 kilometers an hour, speed building once again. Turn 14 is a very fast flat out kink, and then it's hard on the brakes down in some cars, even to first gear for the last corner, just under 70 kilometers an hour, and then onto the pit straight. The race shortly to get underway as on the front row, then you've got Alvaro Perret starting in the McLaren, and he lines up alongside Stefan Rossina in the Lamborghini. The second row of the group, Greg Wagamustier and Philippe Albuquerque, McLaren and Audi respectively. Three hours of racing, the last round of the championship gets underway, the lights go out, they fan out as they work their way up towards turn one. The road climbs a hill four wide, lower down the order, and diving up on the inside, Greg Wagamustier in the ART, McLaren tries to grab the lead, but Perez is the hands on to it, Demusquier tries to slot in behind him. Now the road tightens as one BMW running out way wide, it's one of the DB Motorsport cars, the Malik Mar Malhoff car was a Mercedes doing likewise in the background. This is how busy it is as you ride on board the number one Audi for the first time as they drop downhill. They've all just about survived that first few corners. Yes, a few have gone wide, but there's been no real damage. And Baz Lines in number three is trying to work his way through traffic. We're on board with the BMW now. Baz Lines turning his way out of turn six, trying to find a way past the Audis. You can see the Audi team know exactly what it has to do to keep that BMW at bay. There is number four, the sister car. Bad on the wheel and in danger of losing the place there because he's being attacked by Dino Lenardi. Not VDS and Santa Lock, it would have been a previous, haven't they, after the Nürburgring? Down the back straight they come there, heading towards turn nine, second gear, another tight hairpin here. Again, people trying to be heroes up on the inside, and there's 52, one of the Pro Am class championship protection. His car, the AF Corsa of Ferrari, Louis Mackey on the wheel as they work their way on lap one. The three hours of racing and being hung out to drive there with another three bad line that's pulled wide as he tried to attack the Audi. It didn't pay off for him though. Toward the end of lap number one, overtaking not easy around here. You've really got to be bold and cause the issue. And there is 
Baz Leiner stuck at the moment behind the number 19 Mercedes. Steve Jans going first, there's Maxi Martin looking a bit pensive. We know how quick he is, but even he will find it hard to overtake around here. There aren't that many opportunities. Anybody can make the car game round. It is Max. Over the timing line at the end of the first lap of the race, then, it is Alvaro Perak leading from Stefan Rossina. Matthias Lauda runs third and Nico Verdon fourth. And what progress, if any, is Baz Leiner's made from 15th to 12th at the end of lap one. Number five, you can see Nico Verdon in the Boots and Gignon McLaren, and he's looking for a way past Matthias Lauda. Behind him is Greg Lauda Muschier. Made a good start, went for the inside, couldn't make progress from there. He slipped to fifth. Philippe Albuquerque is sixth. And then, of course, of those cars fighting for the championship at the moment, ninth is where you find Christopher Meese, and only 12th is Bass Linders. But it's not just the overall position we've got to concern ourselves with, it is the class situation. And within that group, there are three Pro Am cars you can discount. And therefore, of course, real terms within Pro Cup. So Baz Leiders moves up the order. His last points he's followed about, not necessarily the overall situation. He looked to the inside to get past Steve Jans, and the Luxembourg driver goes wide. The BMW alongside from the Mercedes fights back. Look at this, he's got the grunt in a straight line. And Baz Leiders has to watch the Mercedes come back at him and retake the place. Great battling this, the Mercedes fends off the BMW. Baz Leiders again goes for the inside line as they work their way out of turn nine. He's alongside, he's got the inside line going into turn ten, but it's the outside line for turn eleven and he still can't find a way through. Right up behind him is Mark Henrici in the Porsche, then nose to tail. Mercedes fending off BMW, they're in different classes. Of course, Leiders tries to find a way through and he still can't do it. You see the problems of overtaking around here and now Leiders is under attack because Mark Henrici in the Porsche is right on his tail. Bass Linders in this invidious situation, trying to attack and defend at the same time. We're getting news that off the road has gone the other Pro Speed Porsche in the hands of Dylan Deardala and also number 40, Dino Lunardi. They've had a drama at turn 15. And number 20 Ferrari in the hands of Patrice Guilla, ahead of Louis Matthews. There's a BMW trying to join in that mix as well of Jochen Havertz. And there's 36 Nicky Mar Malmop already there, so great little squabble this in 51. Gatanyu Ardan, yet to the STP cars in the mix, that's Havertz going way wide. He's got it wrong, under braking, going to turn 11. There's loads of escape road around that, so he's OK. Breaks his way back onto the circuit, but he's lost a few places as a result of all of that. Good little squabble this going on for 19th, 20th and 21st places. What's happened out of all of this to Nick Homerson? In fact, yes, Homerson has gained a place, hasn't he? The black air, of course, of Ferrari. He's moved ahead of Ardania, who runs out wide, and Despinas pounces past him. So that switches those Ferraris around, and Frankie Cheney, the Mercedes, hoping to take advantage of that, as over the kerb and onto the dirt goes Ardania. Cheney, the Chinese driver, lines up the inside at turn 15, and he goes through. The Black Falcon Mercedes gains another place. A bad lap, that, for Catania Ardania, who will drop outside the top 20. This for second place, the Lamborghini fending off the McLaren, but for how much longer? And now De Muschier tries to make a move on Lauda in the background as there. Lamborghini and McLaren slither their way out of turn nine, nose to tail, what's got on behind? Did Lauda go through the corner? Let's just check, there's Rosina, there is Verdon, and then there is Bell, and there is Lauda making contact with De Muschier, and behind you've got Philippe Albuquerque, and he in turn has got Daniel Zampieri behind him as De Muschier goes wide. Albuquerque dives at the inside, and Zampieri tries to go through as well, and he gets by. Utterly hung out to dry, Gregoire de Muschier who tumbles down the order. You can overtake around here, there's the evidence, but it did take a little bit of rubbing to trigger all of that. Louder fends off the McLaren, and it's de Muschier that drops down the order, but they're staying out because at the moment the slick tyres, remember, have got enough temperature in them to work on a slippery track, and if you come in now and go on to wet, the circuit is just not wet enough for them. Right, is this Verdonk's chance to get a second place? We'll see the defence. It's for that, he is on the inside, and right round the outside goes Verdonk. Great move, heading up towards turns one and two. He's got to get the car slowed down for turn three of the heaven, and he's done it. Really good move, that by Verdonk. People tell you the configuration of those first few corners completely go against any possible overtaking. No one tell Nico Verdonk that, did they? Round the outside, a really good move. It's worked for him. He puts a lap on Robert Hissam as well, so Stefan Rossino drops back into third place. Race leader has just gone across the timing line. As you look at Bell, attack Rossina coming out of the last corner. Rob Bell should go through. He does go through. Even before the line, he's ahead. So now it's McLaren. One, two, three. Hexis ahead of Boussaint-Gignon, ahead of Gulf Racing. Rob Bell up into third spot. What further progress can be made from there? He started seventh on the grid. Zampieri passed to Muschier, who gets forced out even wider, and he loses out now to Christopher Meese. 
for the first time, one and two are not nose to tail. They've got a McLaren between them, so Zampieri gets by. So does Christopher Meese and Greg Ryder Mustier after a good start. Has now rather been elbowed back to the pack, hasn't he? Pressure is going to be on Duncan Tappy after his good pole position. Have to try and bring that car back into the mix after the first round of pit stops. We're almost at the end of the first half an hour. The nature of the circuit means there's no real drama on fuel. The team very, very happy to get the car to the hour mark and do the mandatory pit stop. Just break the race into those three sticks. It's not a circuit where fuel consumption is an issue and you're having to think about a splash and down at the very end. Over the timing line, our borough is going to pick over the dock ahead of Rob Bell. And now Audi and McLaren run side by side lower down the order. Around the outside, back up a place, goes to Musgate, powers his way up into eighth ahead of Christopher Meese. And how much of that was the McLaren having better speed? How much of that was Christopher Meese not wanting to get involved in a battle, keeping out of trouble? And Daniel Zampieri, who we know is quick because of his two pole positions, is almost alongside the Audi as Lauda goes wide. Past him goes Albuquerque. And now Daniel Zampieri in the Castle Racing Ferrari looks for a way by as well, but he hasn't been able to find a way past Lauda just yet. The Austrian keeps him at bay, but Felipe Albuquerque, who we've seen in the Grand Prix series in the past, switching away for this weekend from the GTM, gets himself up past the BMW. And it was an error from Lauda, slithering wide, but now Albuquerque goes wide, coming out of turn six, and Lauda is right back on his case, looking for the inside line, out of seven, towards eight. He thinks about the inside line, he's still thinking about it as they come onto the straight, but he hasn't quite got the grunt coming out of the corner. Right up behind Lauda is Daniel Zampieri, De Bustier is catching up as well. Albuquerque defends from Lauda, Lauda defends from Zampieri in the Ferrari, and Lauda breaks late, going towards turn nine. Daniel Zampieri can't find a way through there, and he's now under pressure from the white McLaren. Right with him is Gregoire de Musquier, who's trying to line up to have a go on the inside, which he does, and he goes through, and he almost tags the back of the BMW. That was very close indeed. Somehow, contact avoided. That was real heart-in-mouth stuff for the Vita 4-1, guys. And it was very touch-and-go as de Musquier just got the car slowed down in time, and thankfully there was more going than touching, but only by a coat of paint. So de Musquier gains a place from Daniel Zampieri. Again, it shows how you overtake around here. It's got to be with a bit of a lunge. A very brave dive on the inside there, but it's paid off there. Number two, Audi. Marco Bonanomi at the wheel, running 10th as he comes up over the line. Now, Henarici and Linders released from behind Steve Jans. Can they catch up this queue of cars ahead? That's Linders to the inside of Mark Henarici there at turn six. He's over the curb, but he's not been able to find a way through. That's his best chance yet. Bass Linders couldn't make his stick there, but it was worth a go. The other thing he's got to do, of course, is make sure he doesn't get any contact here and this going out of the race with damage or being delayed with damage. So Bass Line is trying to work a way through. They're all stuck behind traffic, aren't they? Mark Henarici is trying to get through traffic and defend his place. They've also caught the Audis. It's not only a great battle this for the race, it's also significant for what might happen in the championship as Lauda goes off the road as he tries to get through traffic. He's up the escape road and the BMW is going to lose at least one spot to an Audi. On the inside there goes Christopher Meese. But I know he tries to find a way through that car, so Lauda drops down a place or two. And as Lauda tries to defend from Henarici, who lines up to have a go around the outside, and he does go past. The Porsche is another car getting stronger as the stint wears on, and Lauda dropping away further and further and further. He's made a few errors, as we've seen. Is he now starting to overdrive that car? Either way, it is dropping further and further away. It was third, and we thought he might be going for second. And now it's just clinging onto a place within the top 10. And that is 52 off the road. The car that leads Pro Am has had a drama. Louis Mackie was shown as the driver doing the first stint. And that car facing the wrong way off the road as Bonanomi tries to make a move on Lauda, who has to get out of his way. And Linders tries to come through as well. Two places lost for Lauda now. And again, you see how it works. One driver forces the move. The door opens up, and if you're really good on your toes, you'll pounce as well. And that's how Linders has gained a place. But he's still, of course, even though they've got past the BMW, hasn't got past the Audi and Bonanomi. And this is what happens to number 52. Self-induced. Too quick over the curve. Back steps out of line. Matthews can't control it. The car spins around. Off the road he goes. The number 12, McLaren, then right on the back of the Lamborghini. These two still tied together. Stefan Rossino, a race winner in the GT1 World Championship. And look there, Zampieri makes his move against Albuquerque on the outside, coming out of Turn 3, but he can't do it. The Audi staves him off for the moment. 
down they come. Turn four through the left-hander, then to the slow. Turns five and six, climbing uphill, and Zampieri has dropped a length or two. As now Rossina goes wide into Mr. Gate, tries to get up alongside him, but even if he can, he'll be on the outside line for turn eight. No, he can't find a way through. The McLaren has got to slot back in once more. Now this is how the championship looks in Pro Cup, if things stay as they are. Audi would take it by three points from BMW. In other words, the Ortelli Mies Hazakart would win it by three points over Linders. Marcel Napaltela is now Demisier. Goes to the inside against the Lamborghini. Can he find a way by? They're almost level, but again, Gregoire Demisier is on the wrong line for the next quarter. He switches sides and dives at the inside. And that's a really good move, and it's worked for him. Great stuff by Gregoire Demisier to go from one side to the other. He found the gap, he's gone by. And this McLaren that, remember, is leading. The pro, sorry, his second, I should say, in the pro am class is chasing after Rob Bell's car within that group and given the relative pace of Duncan Tappy against Mike Wainwright, this car is looking very, very strong indeed now to win the class come the end of the race. Mike Wainwright, who has got faster and faster over the season, is not as quick certainly as Duncan Tappy, so the ART car, even though it lost places early on, is looking strong now for a class victory. As far as the pro am situation is concerned, as we look at Rossina Fenrir of Albuquerque, Petrobelli currently runs fourth in that class, and 52 is a long, long way back. In fact, that's just going to be out of the points, I would think, that spin. So for the moment, Pro Am looks like it will go the way of Vita 4 1 Team Italy. Things are bound to change with two hours and 11 minutes to go as Rossina runs a little bit wide out of turn nine and right up alongside him now comes Albuquerque. Past him goes Albuquerque. Can he get the line on the outside there? Yes, he can. Moves across, takes the place. So Zampieri now has to go defensive to keep at bay Christopher Meese. Ferrari trying to get past the Lamborghini of Rossina. That's another car all of a sudden look, that's dropping away during this stint. And what's happening to Lauda? He's still 12th, but no longer really part of that leading group. Damage on the back of Henrici's car now, having found a way past Christopher Mee. So Mark Henrici has gained a place, he's up now into eighth spot. Christopher Mee's dropped down to ninth. Back to the Abacus to see what that does for the championship now. Significantly, not only is it an overall place change, it's a place change in class as well. Christopher Mee tries to fight back, as up the road. Zampieri makes his move against the Lamborghini and the Ferrari goes through. Daniel Zampieri has gone by them. Done it up into sixth place goes the Kessel Racing Ferrari ahead of the Lamborghini, and there is Bass Linders still staring at the back of Marco Bonanomi's car. BMW versus Audi still, and Bass Linders tries he might, can't find a way past Bonanomi who is defending ever more vigorously now. Over the timing line they come. This is for ninth and tenth on track up towards turn one with BMW on the outside and one or two more spots of rain on the windscreen possibly there up towards turn two then turn three the hairpin is there a gap on the inside for Bass Linders? yes he goes for it is he alongside yes he is he's on the curb he's going to go through Bass Linders forces Bonanomi out wide but he's done it he had to really force the issue and it's paid off at long long last Bass Linders gets past the Audi and all that was teed up coming out of the last corner it took a long long time to execute but Bass Linders has done it he's got past that really is what he's needed to do all stint. This is Bass Linders into the pits. The car stops. Not the cars are ready. Where they operate, it's always to try and keep Maxine Martin for the last stint. In fact, number two Audi is in as well, so having lost its place, Marco Bonanomi's car comes in and they're going to put Frank Stippler into the car. And in fact, on the pit stop, the Audi has gone back ahead. There you can see them about to come out of the uh, pit exit lane and the number two Audi, look, sorry, um, yes, number two Audi has gone back ahead. Frank Stippler's number six car goes through and there you can see Marco Bonanomi's car, which he's now handed over to Edward Sandstrom, back ahead of the BMW. So after all Bass Linders' hard work, it was a better pit stop for the Audi team. They've done the pit stop faster, and number two is back ahead once again. So now Marco Paltola is going to have to try to find a way past Edward Sansom. Into the pit box comes Alvaro Perez, and Steph Dusseldorf is going to take the car over. So that gives you Nico Verdonk as the leader. Rob Bell is in as well to give way to Mike Wainwright. That, of course, the way they operate, just two drivers in that car is really the last we're going to see of Rob Bell, which is a shame. Mike Wainwright now has to do really the rest of the race. And so the car's going to drop back a bit. So there you can see it happening in the background, the pit stop. Rob Bell walks away, his work done. 
But Mike Wainwright, who, as I said earlier on, has gone faster over the season. He's not as quick as Ron Bell, so that can't even drop away, I'm afraid, now within Pro-Am. As the new tyres come out for it, the new tyres are there also on the number seven McLaren, which drops down, and away it goes. Step does a little glass up the pit lane. They're at the pit out end, so they don't have too much of the pit lane to worry about driving up on the limiter across the white line. And now the car can pick up pace. There is the number one Audi with Christopher Hasser getting on board the car. And they've got to change the tyres, of course, once the fuel has gone in. Door closes. So Christopher Mies has done his work, and this is going to put this car back into the lead of the race, isn't it? Number seven. And it is Steph Dusseldorf at the wheel of it. Will go back into the lead of the race. Number one, back into the race, blasts up the pit lane. And number five stays ahead. So the number five McLaren stays ahead of the Audi on the pit stops. Of course, loses the lead. It has gone the way of Zerl Lamberg to the middle stint, as predicted. So number seven maintains its advantage as number one heads up the pit lane. Christopher Meese having brought the car in. Christopher Hauser takes it out, of course. And that car is going to rejoin just ahead of Frank Stippler there, looking number six. So, yes, on the pit stops, number one goes ahead of number six. Felipe Albuquerque was always ahead of Christopher Meese. Straight away, Christopher Hauser on new cold tyres. It's a little bit sideways as he tries to fend off his teammate. And behind them, you've got Duncan Tappy having taken over now from Greg Wilder Moustier. Oliver oh, the Jarvis there on the left, watching on. He's yet to go. Two smiles from them for the moment. So the race order currently, number seven, Steph Dusseldorf leading five, Zahn Hamburg. Third is number one, Christopher Hauser. Fourth, you can see the battle between them, is Frank Stippler. Fifth is Duncan Tappy in the ART McLaren. Sixth is Davide Rigon, number 71, Ferrari. Then you've got 775, Xavier Marsum. Eighth, we've had the pit stop, Lauda out, Franchi in in the BMW. Ninth is number two, Audi, Edward Sandstrom. And then in tenth place, number three, Marcus Paltola in the Mark BDS BMW. Round the outside of the number six, Audi goes Duncan Tappy, so that now puts him up into fourth place. Duncan Tappy goes through. So, Tappy goes a little bit wide, and now Stippler makes the run up on the inside towards turn 12, and there's almost contact, there is contact! And it's the McLaren that gets bundled out of the way, and Stippler didn't get past him. So, it's the right situation, really, the McLaren stays ahead of the Audi, and Frank Stippler trying to make a move that didn't quite work for him. And now, what damage has that done to the McLaren? Straight away, some of the ART mechanics get on their feet, ready to go to the pit apron, just in case Duncan Tappy needs to bring the car in. As Greg Wilder Muskie looking on. Over the timing line comes the leading car. Behind, look, you've got the battle for second in Pro-Am side-by-side. Side. Mercedes and McLaren is Oliver Morley versus Mike Wainwright, and Oliver Morley goes through on the inside. Winner of the Nürburgring, so he's taken second in Pro-Am away from Mike Wainwright, and then behind there is Eugenio Amos, and of course Amos in the red and black Ferrari there is looking to win the class in the championship, so although he wants another place away from the McLaren on track, he's another driver thinking about, to an extent, how many risks he can afford to take. He looks on the inside line, does Wainwright give him racing room? He doesn't have to, it's a genuine battle for position, this. But Eugenio Amos lines up on the inside, is he going to go through? It's hard to overtake at turn six, it's narrow, it's tight, and he can't do it. To turn eight, it's another slow corner, but it puts you onto this long straight now, down towards turn nine, up to 216 kilometres an hour on the straight line here. Look at the way the Mercedes has gapped the McLaren, and what does Amos do now? He moves to the inside line, Mike Wainwright checks his mirrors, he sees the Ferrari coming, they go side by side to the corner, and the Ferrari goes through, third in class now, and that's even better for the championship. Eugenio Amos then looks as though if the car stays out of trouble, he's going to bring the Pro-Am Cup class title away for Vita 4-1 Team Italy, of him, Alessandro Bonaccini, and Giacomo Petrovelli, who has done all he can do this season now. Giacomo just sitting in the pit bunker, biting his nails. Hauser goes defensive against Tappy as they come over the line, and behind them also, now Stippler having to go defensive to try to fend off Davide Rigon. Towards turns one, two, and three, this early sequence they go. Big changes in the order, does it there? Yes, it does. Tappy has gone through. Duncan Tappy finds a way past the number one out, he's done it. So Duncan Tappy now good for the overall podium, but of course he's got to give the car back to Gregoire de Moustier for the last stint. That's how they've worked it in previous rounds. So, 
Let's now see whether Tappy can get past Amberg, whereas Christopher Hauser couldn't. Hauser perhaps being a bit more circumspect, thinking about the championship, but now Duncan Tappy can get stuck in and have a go. Because Amberg, defence from Tappy, who goes one way, then the other. He goes to the outside, the car squirms under brake. Can he go all the way around the outside? Yes, he can. What a move! Great stuff, Duncan Tappy right round the outside, desperately late on the brakes, and he's done it. Great move, Tappy then now up into second place, down to third has gone Hamburg. Then you've got Hauser ahead of Stippler, and Rieck on his sixth, and Tappy, having been released from behind the Putsen Junior racing car, starts to pull away. Great move, that by Duncan Tappy. Coming up over the line now, the number six Audi powers over the timing line. And he's up alongside number one, and Regon is trying to get past all of them. And as they dive up towards turn one, number one has kept his place, but Regon has finally got ahead. We get reports of more rain around the circuit now, so the rain is certainly coming. But to recap, Davide Regon has now put himself up ahead of Frank Stimber, but Christopher Hauser has kept his place. And now, with the road getting wetter, they've also got more traffic to work their way through. Wipers are on look, and on this section of the circuit, it's proper, it's wet and slippery now. Sideways there is Edward Mondron as he is lapped by Frank Stippler. So Stippler drops back behind Regal, but Hauser fends them all off. And what happened with all of that was that Hauser had to get past Stippler, who was ahead of him over the timing line, had to retake that place, and then Stippler also had to make sure that he didn't get caught up in the battle with the Ferrari. The fact that number six has dropped away by a couple of places isn't the end of the world. Significantly, it's ahead of number three still, as Oli Jarvis gets ready to take over from Stippler. As up on the inside of Zerl Amberg goes Christopher Hauser. Amberg struggling in the wet because Regon has got past him as well. And now the circuit is getting more and more treacherous. We are 13 minutes away from the end of this second hour when you'd expect people to come into the pit lane. So can they tiptoe round on slicks? They still get to work. Do they still have enough temperature to work? As another place is lost by Zerl Amberg as now Stippler goes up on the inside. Slippery surface flag being shown, the drivers know exactly why, because now this rain that has come is making the road slippery. So Zell Lamberg has lost a whole heap of places on that lap as he tiptoes round. We've got one car that's just come in, which is 57, Eugenio Amos. That will put the car down in the hands of Alessandro Bonaccini, and remember, that's on target to win Pro-Am in the championship. But is there a problem on the... Left rear corner, something has dropped out. It's a wet tyre there, but something looks like it may have gone wrong in the back of the car. This may well need investigation. Slicks off, and the car's going to its garage. The car's going to go to its garage. This is big, big drama in the championship. It's been running so strongly, and seemingly now the Vita 4 1 car's going to have to drop down or twist it round on the jacks there and wheel it back into the garage. They found something in the left rear corner. It's off the road as Gonzalo Lamberg is back on again. That's A at the uh, Vita 4 1 Team Italy, rather, Pit Garage is now the scene of real drama. That's where Hayden's going to be heading, no doubt, as they try and get to the bottom of this problem. And are we looking at another championship drifting away from a team? We think Mark VDS is in strife as far as winning in the Pro Cup is concerned. And now, possibly, after all they've done, such a great job of the race, is it going the way, not of Vita 4 1, but of that car, of AF Corsa, the black Ferrari? A whole queue of cars coming in, so you've got this Porsche, Mercedes, Oliver Morley, the team Mercedes comes in this time. Duncan Tappy goes a little bit wide at turn 15 up the inside there, tries to go Christopher Hauser, both of them staying out for another lap. Davide Regon has come over the line up into second place now, having got past Tappy and pulled away from him. Regon is excelling in these conditions. Through in third place goes Tappy, through in fourth place goes Hauser, Stippler is in. So the number six Audi has come in. Franchi is in, and also now number three has pitted to give way to Maxime Martin. Well, the number one Audi is going to pit this time, as also in comes Duncan Tappy. So Christopher Hauser will come in to give way to Stefan Ortelli. And for the last, what have we got, hour and four minutes of the race, it's going to be wet. Will it get wet or will it get drier? Are we going to see people have to come in again for tyres if conditions improve? Of course, the race leader has yet to come in. Steph Dusseldorf has yet to serve his minimum driving time and that will give way to Fran Makaviki. And the safety car is on standby, I'm told. Now, is that for the weather conditions rather than for 
the car off the road. It's been declared a wet race, which normally means it's up to the teams to manage the tyres and for the drivers to manage the throttle against the wet road. Ortelli into number one. The safety car and on standby, says the legend on the timing screen. He's in the pit lane, it's not just rain, it's hail. In fact, that they are suffering down there. So there's the number three BMW with Maxi Martin at the wheel. So where does this put him? Against the number one Audi, which is rejoining now. And Maxi Martin will be closer, but he's not yet at the end of the lap. And we do get the safety car on track. We do get the safety car. And that's going to help the number three BMW, isn't it? And it's going to bring it nearer to the number one Audi. There is the safety car. And it's going to collect, not the race leader, it's going to collect a line of cars near the head of which will be the number one Audi and therefore Maxi Martin is going to be much, much closer to that car and the leader is in. The leader has come into the pit lane for Dusseldorf to give way to Fred Makaviki. There he is. And how is this going to affect them on the safety car situation? We'll see as they work their way around the next lap. Can the McLaren get out or is it going to be trapped in the pit lane before the cars come round again? This may have just gone against the leading car. We'll wait and see. Now, there is the safety car. If the McLaren is allowed out, before the crocodile gets round the lap, then it's all good. If it's held there until the crocodile has gone past, they're in big, big strife. The car has dropped down, and a Ferrari has arrived ahead of it. As you can see, the number 10 soft red car that delays it just a little bit. Now, are the pit lane lights on red, or is it going to be allowed out? It's allowed out. The cars are still making their way out of the pit lane, so it's OK. That car will keep its race lead, and will join in at the back of the crocodile and be there for the best part of our lap ahead of the opposition. Over the time it might go the race leading train of cars. 51 and a half minutes of the season remains. And I would suggest, looking out of the window, that it's a little bit better or less bad weather-wise than it was a few minutes ago. And indeed, the safety car is in at the end of this lap. The safety car is in this time as we have a replay here of the number three BMW and number 12 Greg Wilder Mustier spinning on the approach to turn eight, and that of course is behind the safety car, so De Musier has a spin, he just ran a bit wide and got it on the wet painted kerb, and De Musier rotates, gets himself back onto the circuit, but of course he has lost places. Now you're not meant to overtake under the safety car, you can't really do much about it when the guy ahead spins out of your way, can you? So safety car's going to be in this time, and that spin, has that cost them the class lead? No it's not, but it's put the 37 BMW right onto their tail. The safety car peels back in, so we're just about ready to go racing once again. And now, as a proper race pace, look at the difference between Fred Makaviki as a pro driver, who gets onto the power straight away, and the gentleman races behind, because number 10, Ferrari, which is the next one in the queue, is nowhere as they come out of the last corner. Gabriel Balthazar at the wheel of that car, holding up everybody else as he comes over the line. And in fact, losing a place on track, wasn't he there? Because number 42, Paul Lancher, got ahead of him, I would say, even before they got to the timing line. So that might take a little bit of explaining. So now, in the gloom, in the wet, what can we expect out of people in terms of trading places? The number two Audi still running second. And these are how the Pro Cup points would look. But at the moment, the Audi team taking just a one-point advantage to win the class in the championship over the number three BMW. Last time, Maxi Martin was 4.4 seconds behind Jarvis. That's what he's going to try and make up. And then, attack, number six, just riding shotgun against car number one. The BMW, though, has been hoping for a wet race. And Maxi Martin has been sort of spa. He's great in the wet, so let's now see what he can do. As across the line has gone Oliver Jarvis, across the line now goes Maxi Martin. I'll give you in a moment, but that lap from Martin was a 53.5, he's closer, and so the gap now is 3.9 seconds, he's getting closer and closer all the while to the Oliver Jarvis-driven Audi, and so it's now not just for position, it's for the championship, and Vincent Voss is looking a bit more stressed than he did early on, because the race now perhaps is coming to Mark VDS, the conditions are favouring the car and the driver, and the safety car has also changed the order, and that car really did jump up the field. Boss was saying to me this morning, it really was wet. That's what the Audis needed. And he's got it. There's 71, which currently is in third place. Down to four. Audi number one is ahead. So on this lap, Matuzo has dropped back behind Stefan Ortelli rather than gaining a pace against Vantor. But you're going to have those cars trade places any moment, are you not? Because they need to get number one further up the order. 
as they come down towards turn nine. There it is, an easy pass. Stefano Tully goes up into second place, so that extends the gap on points in the championship. And it also means there are now two hours for Maxime Martin has somehow got to find a way past within 44 minutes. He's not even caught up to them yet, but when he does, life's going to be difficult, that's for sure. As there, trying to go to the inside line now up towards turn six is Jarvis, he's done it. He's gone through up into fourth place ahead of Stefano Gattuso, and there off the road has gone the number two Audi. Number two spins. Has he got back on in front of Maxime Martin? Is the question. The car had a spin exactly there yesterday in the dry. It's spun again in the wet. So we need to see whether BMW is relative to a still sliding out in its off the road once again in the hands of Lawrence Van Tour. He doesn't spin this time, but he put down the power. The car got away from him. This is the BMW that's further up the road. And that's Ortelli who's had a moment. And there's another car off and there's a yellow flag waving. That's all down at turn nine. It's one of the Ferraris that's gone off, and I think that could be 57 that's off the road. And 50, Jack Gerber has got a problem. Look at the left rear corner, just like 38 Ferrari had early on in the race. Number 30, Craig Wilkins recovering after a spin. It's all happening because of the rain now. It's so, so wet, people are really struggling to keep the cars on the road. Some are doing a grand job, others are really struggling. So what is that situation with Ortelli having run wide and the spin for car two done to the overall situation? It is 57 that's off the road. Look, that's also got left rear breakage, and that's definitely the end of the championship for Bonaccini and friends. That car's going no further. It's also brought out a yellow flag. And so, over the line, Ortelli goes through now in second place. Jarvis runs third. He is two seconds away from Ortelli. So Maxi Martin, as he goes over the timing line, has got to get past the Ferrari, first of all, in the hands of... Stefano Gattuso, number two, Lawrence Vantor, then the spin was costly. He's put him back behind the Mark VDS BMW, so that is no longer really that car of any help as far as Team WRT is concerned. Now, at the moment, Ortelli running second would give him 114 points. Martin fifth would give him 109. So it's still an Audi Championship, but as the Ferrari goes wide, the BM spins! Maxime Martin has lost it! 360 degrees, that's the only mistake we've seen all year. He's got the car going again. Has he lost any places? He certainly lost time ahead of him. Gattuso got sideways, and Maxi Martin got a little bit caught out by that, and he spun, and that mistake, as I say, I think it's the only one we've really seen all season, could well have cost him the championship, as Mike Wainwright has had a drama, and the car won't restart, there's flame out of the back, and another spin, number five, Andy Suchet, goes off coming through a corner and finding a car stuck on the road, and look, they're just arriving backwards now. If the safety car came out for short before, surely it's got to come out again. I'm looking at the man on the gantry on the start line who's got his yellow flag in hand, and we are short, yes, we go safety car. It's come up on the screen as a spin for Gregoire de Moustier. The safety car is being deployed. The gentleman trophy leading in the championship, Audi is off as well. He's just hit the McLaren, so Philippe Guillac, as I say, the Colts leading it in the championship, has hit the station in McLaren. We do go safety car yet again. And there's no option, is there? I think that bit of contact has bumped started the McLaren. He drives away from the scene of the crime now. But it's partly with cars littering the circuit. It's partly because of the weather. And so, after all of the drama, we go safety car again. Number five has gone off. We saw that. Look at the damage. This car's got to finish to win the class in the championship. And Philip Gia with front damage may not go any further. Now let's just see because the Porsche class opposition is out of the race. But if the Audi doesn't restart, it needs to have done 75% to be classified. Otherwise, the class and the championship will be won by the JV Motorsport Audi. And Van Tour is off in the gravel. That's a second spin, but this one is done under the safety car and he's off the road. He may be pushed out of the gravel and be able to rejoin from there, but it shows how bad the conditions are if a pro driver gets it wrong and flings it into the gravel under the safety car. Now it looks as though the rain has eased off a little bit. This is the spin that we saw, first of all, sideways and then spinning was Gattuso. Martin spun, Wainwright spun in the Gulf McLaren. They got going, and then Mike Wainwright is just stuck. He can't get the car going, and that is not where you want to be parked. And just wait and see how many cars oh, nearly, nearly hit it. AF Corsa, Vita 4-1. And then we get one arriving backwards in a second or two, as we saw. There's a spinning Andy Suchek. And Mike Wainwright definitely trying to get going. Just avoided by what I think was another 17 Ferrari. And then eventually, 
his worst nightmare in this brown trouser moment arrives. He's collected by another car. And that, there it is, is the Audi. Bang. It was spinning already and ends up clobbering the parked car, Philip Giac. And Craig Wilkins has to avoid as well. So utter mayhem with the weather having turned nasty. That's Philip Giac. Taking the car. And the Santalock team hard at work to try to get the car back into the race. Just to finish, just 75% will do. There is number two out of the gravel. And red faced Lawrence Van Tour heading back to the pit lane. But I would imagine that the race director would want to work with him because to throw the car into the gravel while the safety car is on track is a bit undercooked. Down it goes. Philip Gehrke fires up the engine. And will be on the radio, no doubt, on this lap to the team to explain to Santalock how the car feels, what it's doing. And as Philippe Gear goes up the pit lane behind, you will see the number two Audi because Lawrence Van Tour, after the gravel, is being allowed back into the race. That car drops down into 23rd place, but it is back in the race. So Pro-Am, he was obviously looking good for the championship ahead of Petrobelli. Bonaccini and Amos. And that's the race classification. It has been for quite some time now, and now it looks like it may well end. The wind picking up as well, but with the rain still falling, it's not doing anything to help dry the track, is it? So, the team still being warm about water on the inside of turn five. It's not so much the rain as it falls. Yes, that's a problem, but it's the standing water on the circuit that's a big issue as well. But I don't think anybody wants the series to end by the safety car. There may be no choice. And the red flag comes out. That's it. Job done. Championship is over. The red lights come on. The red flag is waved. And there is a championship winning team. The champions are crowned. Stefan Ortelli, Christopher Meese and Christopher Hasser. It is not the way anybody wants to win a championship or to end a race. But the weather conditions and the opinion of the race director and it together have made it inevitable. The championship is over behind the safety car under a red flag and it's not the way anybody would have wanted to win the crown but it has happened. Team WRT, the Belgian Audi Club, there's Vincent Vol celebrating with his guys. It's been a hard season. The championship provisionally is won by Team WRT for Christopher Hasser, Christopher Mies and Stefan Ortelli. The cars stop on the track and just imagine the disappointment at Mark VDS Racing not being able to get a crack at fighting for the crown despite the fact the car works its way up into fourth place but with the safety car coming out and the race not restarting never getting the chance the race will not resume let's join Haley in the pit lane and hear from a delighted Audi team Vincent Voss is there, Pierre Giordani is there, the driver's there, Haley is there as well Congratulations Vincent, you are the 2012 Bonpin Enduro Series Pro Cup Champion Thank you, I think it was a half fight Unfortunately, it's, the race was stopped by red flag, but I think for safety reason, a lot of cars were spinning, and I think it was the only way to finish. Yeah, it's been quite the season for WRT. It's been a pleasure to watch you guys racing and second in a row champions of the Bomba Endurance Series. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a great season and uh, winning this championship is uh, fantastic. It has been very nerve-wracking because of what all the things which happened, but uh, we are very happy. And also congratulations to the Mark VDS team because they did a great job and, you know, there was very little between uh, the two of us. So congratulations to them. Thank you. So, Stefan Ortelli, Christopher Mies and Christopher Hauser take the championship. Let's hear from the drivers. They are in the pit lane with Haley. Christopher, congratulations. You are the 2012 Drivers' Champion. How does it feel? I can't believe it, it's unbelievable. It was just a crime, the last hey, minutes, hey, you know. Hey. The start, start was so difficult to make no mistake. Now we are champion again with WRT, thank the Lord for that. I mean, I can't describe it, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Stefan, you definitely finished in difficult conditions, but the experience and the young talent has definitely brought the title home, hasn't it? Uh, together we are doing a good job and uh, I think they deserve it, you know, it's a big championship for both Christopher and I'm happy for them and I'm especially happy that uh, Vincent Voss could uh, retain his title, both title and uh, really, really uh, a big uh, claps for the team because we are champs again guys, we are champs. Congratulations Christopher, you didn't want to quite celebrate a few minutes ago but now you can let loose, congratulations, you are the champion for 2012. 
It's unbelievable. It's it's a pleasure. I mean, I can't say more. It's so great to be champion 2012 with Audi, with, with WRT. I mean, we did everything what we could do and we did it. So we will celebrate in the evening. Thank you, guys. Now, let's not forget that there was a race in all of that, won by the Hexes team, Fred Macko, Alvaro Parent and Steph Dusseldorf. Alvaro, such difficult conditions, but you have dominated the weekend. The McLaren has certainly performed here. Really good, performed really well. Navarra is a track for us and, uh, you know, great job. Uh, this last stint was a bit crazy with the weather, you know, it's super hot here. It's like <laughs> the Maldives. <laughs> no, you know, it's uh, a bit boring on the last uh, stint, but great job for, for all of us. Congratulations to the team and to, uh, <laughs> and to McLaren and to everyone. Great job. The race goes the way of the McLaren of Hexis Racing. Alvaro Perrant, Fred McAvicki and Steph Dusseldorf take the win ahead of number one, Stefan Ortelli, along with Christopher Haase and Christopher Meese. Third to the number six Audi, Frank Stippler, Oliver Jarvis and Felipe Albuquerque ahead of the Vanquish Bass Linders, Marcus Paltola and Maxime Martin. Fifth, Mark Henrici, Xavier Marsen and Mark Goossens ahead of David Rigon, Stefano Gattuso and Daniel Zampieri. Greg Franchi, Matthias Lauda, Frank Kettler, seventh. Sarah Lamberg, Andy Suchek and Nico Verdonk, eighth after the spins that car had, but a good first stint by Verdonk. Greg Wadamustier and Duncan Tappy come home in ninth and win their class ahead of Andrew Danilou, Jochen Havertz and Simon Canal. Then you've got Peter Cox, Jos Mentum and the start driver Stefan Orsina in the Lamborghini. And as the results scroll through, in 13th overall, the third placed team within Pro-Am on of Amore, Steve Jans and Sean Edwards, 14th behind them. The Dan Brown, Giuseppe Ciro, Gaetano Ardania, Ferrari. And keep going, you get to 23rd. And that's where the third of the Team WRT Audis finished. So out come the drivers then, because for third place, will be Oliver Jarvis, Frank Stippler, and the man that started in the number six uh, Audi, which was Felipe Albuquerque. There for second, the champions, Stefan Ortelli, along with Christopher Haas and Christopher Mies. And then the race winners, Fred McAvicki, along with Steph Dusseldorf and Alvaro Parent, make their way on to the podium. It's McLaren, Audi, Audi within the top three. And the French Axis Racing team scores victory in Spain. There, the trophies go to the race winners. For them, no such dramas because it's been an absolutely faultless race for Fred McAvicki, Steph Dusseldorf, and for Alvaro Perrant there in the middle. The winning drivers in Pro Am now Greg Ryder Moustier and Duncan Tappy for ART Grand Prix. Absolutely delighted despite the dramas that befell Greg Ryder Moustier spinning behind the safety car. They're there, they are winners, and it's another French team running a McLaren that comes out on top at Navarra. There's Duncan Tappy, a delighted man. That movie pulled round the outside to gain a place down at turn nine. Fabulous, fabulous move. And although Gregoire de Moustier could have been a bit of a red faced driver by the end of this, if those spins would cost them the class win, he brought it home, he did just enough to hang on and to take the race win. We're going to have the gentleman trophy. Jan Brunstedt, Daniel Roos, Michael Bender in the background. So the Swedish team, victorious in Spain. Let's look at the championship then, because this is how we stand provisionally in the Pro Cup. The Christophers and Stefan Ortelli win by three points over Linders, Martin and Paltola. Up to third come Mark Goossens, Mark Henrici and Xavier Marsen. Andrea Piccini fourth and then fifth. Frank Stippler and Edward Sandstrom and Lawrence Van Tour, plus Greg Franchi and Frank Keckler with the BMW. Through their efforts, they have the same number of points ahead of Rene Ras, the Spa 24 hour winner. Matthias Lauda missed Monza, but he ends up lined ahead of Gattuso, Rigon, and Zampieri. Well, that is what Navarra looks like now. It looked a lot sunnier earlier on in the day and we catch up on the Pro-Am situation. Nick Homerson and Louis Machiels crowned as the champions, ahead of Andrea Bertolini, Eugenio Amos and Alessandro Bonaccini, with Giacomo Petrobelli as the third of those Vita 4-1 drivers frustrated that their car ended up in the gravel. 
and the recent good results from Black Falcon help Oliver Morley up to seventh in the class. And the drivers now that are champions making their way back onto the podium. And I think also Philip Gear has been found for the Gentleman Trophy podium. But Pierre Hershey and Robert Hissom take the championship 11 points up on Michael Bender and Jan Brunstrak. Jocker Mang is doing a part season ends up third. Daniel De Bruyere and Christian Kelders a part season fourth ahead of Gael Lucidier, Gilles Vanillet and Luc Payar in the Viper. So on the podium we now have Gentleman Trophy winners, Pro-Am Trophy, Pro-Am Cup winners and the Pro Cup winners. There are Ortelli, Mies and Hasse along with Thomas and Machiels, or AF Corsa, and the Gentleman Trophy winners are there as well. So Amato Ferrari's team victorious within the Crown class. Nick Thomason there receiving his amazing golf man. Uh, a delighted Team WRT celebrates. So does Santilock. Audi's winning in two classes, and there for... Yeah, of course, uh, the celebrations begin also for Nick Thomason and for Louis Machiels at the end of the championship season. There's Stefan Rattel, the man behind the series, who may not approve of the weather, but I think he approves of what's been a great year of racing. And at the end of the championship year, there are the drivers' champions on the podium from Hayley Cox and in the pit lane. And for me, David Addison, it's goodbye for now. And join us in 2013 for more great racing in a superb championship. Farewell from Navarra.